Today, I'm going to show you how to create realistic looking reflections inside of Adobe Photoshop. I'm also going to show you some cool tips and tricks and things you can do with reflections to really get that extra something out of them. Hey guys, I apologize I wasn't able to get a video up last week. The dog ate my homework. Actually, I have a really good excuse. I was on the road touring with Kiss and David Lee Roth as the um, tour photographer. And I was supposed to have only been gone for three days. They kidnapped me for 11 days. So um, I missed being able to make my video and upload. So I apologize, guys. But today is a special today. Today is the 30th anniversary of Adobe Photoshop. And guess what? I still have my floppy disks from my original version inside of the PC or Windows. So I'm curious, what version did you guys start on in Photoshop? So let's get started with the tutorial right now. We're gonna be looking at creating a photorealistic reflection and also we're gonna do some things. We'll make a puddle and some other things with Photoshop right now. So here we are is a photo I shot of this beautiful Aston Martin DBS. Now I wanna thank my friend George for helping me um, get my hands on this car. All right, so why don't we look at making this reflection right now? So any kind of reflection you're doing, you're gonna start with the same thing. We're gonna grab this marquee tool, and then we're gonna drag and make a selection around the area we wanna reflect. Now we wanna reflect right at the bottom of the wheels. So I've made a selection around the top part of that image. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the layers panel, and we want to just copy that selection to a new layer. So control J and it would be command J on the Mac will copy that to a new layer. If I hide the background, we can see there we go and it's nicely trimmed down at the wheels. Great. Let's turn this on and just make sure we're using the move tool. We just hit the V key for the move tool. Okay, what we wanna do now is we wanna flip this over to make it reflective. So first thing we're gonna do is pop into Control T or Command T to go into free transform mode, and this enables us to do a lot of transforming. If you're watching many of my tutorials, you'll know I use this tool all the time. Command T, Control T, keyboard shortcut, well worth learning. All right, now we're gonna right click, and you'll see different menus. So the one we're gonna go to is we wanna flip this vertical. We don't wanna flip it horizontal, we wanna flip it vertical. Click on there, and now we get it. Now, all we need to do is move over. You'll notice you see this. If I drag, we'd be rotating it. I don't want to do that. So we're going to move into our bounding box area. And now I want to drag it down. Now, it kind of might pop over a little bit like it's doing there. So if you hold down the shift key while you're doing this, it's going to constrain it to perfectly vertical. All right, let's have a look now. And what we want to do is just line up those wheels so we've got a nice reflection right there. Now to apply it, hit the enter key. And it looks like I wanna go up one pixel. So I just hit the arrow key on the keyboard and tap once and we can nudge it up or we can nudge it down. See what we can do there, just nudge that into position one pixel at a time. All right, great. Now what we've got here is just kind of a mirror image. I wanna make it look a little bit more like a reflection. So the way to do that is if we select on here and we go under filter, and we choose blur. And what I wanna do is just kind of give it that mirrory, you know, watery kind of a blur. And we're gonna do that using the direction blur. So what we're gonna do is go down here and we're gonna go down to motion blur. And here we are in the motion blur. And I'm just gonna pull that up to the side here. I wanna make it go perfectly vertical. So I'm gonna drag this. Now we wanna to go to 90 degrees if you hold down the shift key, it'll constrain it to 15 degree increments, makes it very, very easy to get exactly 90 degrees. Now, it's up to you how much distance you want to apply here. You can see it. what it's doing is just kind of blurring it a little bit, making it look a little bit more like a reflection and not just a perfect mirror image, because this car is not sitting on a mirror. What we could do is increase it. Notice as we increase it, we get more of a uh, blur, just depending on what you want. So, you know, sometimes you might want to go quite high like this. In this case, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I don't want it quite so blurry. I want to just do it here. Now, what would really influence this would be things like how much wind or how smooth the top of the surface is. Different things like that would make it look um, 
more or less blurred. So I'm going to give it like a little bit less of a blur, taking it to about here. Once again, depending on the effect that you're looking for, you determine the amount of blur that looks right to you. Now remember, if you're working on a higher resolution image, you're going to be using a greater amount of blur than if you were using a lower resolution image. So the setting that I'm using right now of 33 pixels may not necessarily work for your image, depending on the size of the image you're working on, because this is a high resolution image. So if you're just looking for a basic reflection, you could actually just stop here if you wanted. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some different things that we can do with these reflections to get different types of effects. And in fact, we're going to end up creating a realistic puddle. But before we do, let's look at something else really quickly with the blurs. So we can see we've got a nice blur here. Now there's different things we can do. One of the things we could do here is create a layer mask. And with this layer mask, what we can do is we can blend this reflection in so it's more reflected at the front and less reflected as it comes towards the viewer, which would probably look a little bit more realistic in a lot of situations. So what we want to do is hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors to black and white. Now we're going to grab our gradient. With our gradient, we want to go up under the options here and we want to choose foreground to background. And you can see there, that's foreground to background there. You might see it under the basics in yours. Make sure it's set to linear. Normal mode, opacity 100. Reverse doesn't matter, because if you go the wrong way, just drag it again. So let's go down here, making sure the layer mask is selected. We're going to click and we're going to drag down, holding down the shift key once again to do that constraint. And we're going to release it and see what we do here is we're fading that off now. So it starts to look a little bit more realistic. Now, if you look at some of the things like some of the uh, earlier Apple ads and different things like that, you'd have a shorter reflection. So you would just drag it a shorter distance here, maybe a little bit more. And see what we're doing is we're just putting a little bit of reflection at the top here, which just kind of makes it look like the ground is a little bit more shiny and not so flat. All right, so play around with those options. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to get rid of this mask by right clicking and just choosing to delete layer mask and we're going to go back where we were. Let's look at creating some kind of a puddle effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my lasso tool. Now you could draw this using the lasso tool like I'm doing here and that'll get you somewhat of a shape. The other option is to use the pen tool. The pen tool will actually get us smoother curves. And I have another tutorial on the pen tool if you want to learn how to use that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click and drag in the direction we want to go. And what we're doing is just looking for nice little curves here. Nothing too crazy. We don't want anything too sharp. Just a nice, simple, gentle kind of a, a curve. There. And then I just click on that point there and that will complete our curve. Great. So what I want to do now is I just want to select this curve here. So I'm going to go into the paths panel here and control click to make that selection. Now, if you don't want to use the curve, just remember you can do the lasso tool. You can just kind of draw it that way as well. That'll get you a similar result. All right, let's create a new layer. And on the new layer, I just want to fill this with a color. I'm going to fill it with white, which happens to be my background right now, which is just command backspace. It doesn't really matter um, what color you use because this is only going to be for the shape. So what we want to do is drag this underneath the car. And what we want to do is fit this reflection inside that shape. Now, the way to do that is to create a clipping group. So if we hold down the Alt or the Option key, notice when we go between the two layers, you see this little arrow. When you click, what it does is it forces this top layer here inside that shape. And this is what we want. So what we're doing now is we're constraining our shape or our reflection to this particular shape. Now, it doesn't look too much like a puddle yet. We've got some things we need to do. So one of the first things I want to do is just kind of roughen up the edges a little bit. And then we're going to blur the edges so we don't get these hard edges, you know, looking very fake. So let's go into here and we choose filter. And we're going to go down to distort and under distort, we're going to use the ripple filter. So let's pop open the ripple. 
Now remember, we're not doing it on the image, so we're not going to be rippling the image. We're doing it on the shape here. So we're going to be rippling the edges of the shape. So let's just kind of move this around a little bit until we can find that shape. There it is there. And we can just kind of drag it over a little bit to the sides. If it's a little hard to see like it is there, we just hit this minus key a couple of times. We can shrink it down. Okay, so we're at 33, it's just pretty close, but let's make it pretty close in size so we get an idea of what the ripple's gonna do. If you look down the bottom left here, you'll see 26.31%. That's in that magnification that we're viewing our image. Now you can't type those numbers in, but if you click, we can go down to 25%, which is as close as we can get. And so if we look here, the effect we're gonna get on these edges is gonna be very similar to the actual size we're gonna see on our image. So you could play around with medium, Notice we get these kind of um, jaggy edges there. And if we go the other way, the jaggy edges go the opposite. If we go to about zero, we're going to get no jaggy edges. So watch what happens here. See how it just kind of goes that way and then you go the other way. It's doing the same thing basically, whether you go positive or negative. But just remember the center is going to be the least amount. And as we go to the edges, it's going to give us more. All right, but let's have a look and we see if we look at it small, see it's going to be kind of fine edges. And if we go large, it's going to be these big edges, which are going to look too jaggy, probably not very realistic. So let's go to small and I'm bringing this up to about 827 for my image. Now remember, depending on the resolution you're working on, it's going to look different. So click and notice how we get these rougher kind of edges around there. Still not looking very realistic, but what it's going to do is it's going to break it up a little bit for me when I blur it. So let's go in here, we're going to choose Filter Blur. We're going to go down to a Gaussian Blur. And then let's pull it up a little bit, just so we can start to blur those edges. There we go. And just by kind of jagging it a little bit, what it does is it just gives it a different kind of a fall off than if we applied the Gaussian Blur by itself. If we did by itself, we'd have to use a larger amount to get a soft edge and it would just start to bleed too much. So we're just clicking OK, and now we're getting something a little bit better. Now, what we want to do, though, is we want to go under our layer here. If we turn that layer off, notice it hides everything. So we're going to take our opacity and just pull it down a little bit, and it just allows a little bit more of that ground to shove through as well. So those are the steps to create your own puddle. So you can start very basic or you can add, you know, the additional information to start to get more realism. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything new about this. Um, happy 30th birthday to Photoshop. And I've got a special 30th edition of Photoshop uh, video coming up very soon. So anyway, guys, if you're new to Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting that subscribe button and you're going to get a new tutorial from me every single week. Turn on your notifications, hit that notification bell, so you know when I upload the new video, which is usually every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.